Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of my Let's Play World of Tanks. Now, this is a special episode here, even though I am playing in a standard platoon match. I have with me uh, Kerrigan, Disincarnate, and Von Choker, all from the What Would Patton Do group, or WWPD. We are in a tournament for Tier 3 tanks, part of the IGN game that they have going on right now, the tournament. And uh, we were involved in a few games earlier, and I wanted to take a minute to interview them as to what they went through, because I was unable to join them for our first game, as I had some prior commitments that uh, did not allow me to participate in the first game that we played. So, I will uh, let them take it away. If you want to kind of give us the brief, as well, first off, let me start off by saying we... The first game that we were scheduled to play, we had a bye week. So we actually played our second game, which they're going to discuss now. So Vaughn, if you'd like to go ahead and uh, give me a recap of what you remember, I'd greatly appreciate it. Alright, well, um, our first ga uh, sorry, the first get round of um, thing, as you said, was a bye. The second round we were playing, um, I think it's an alpha. And uh, they were, um, you know, we checked out what, what sort of bats those guys had. Uh, and sort of came up with what we thought were going to be um, the best strategies on the mines map is where we were slated to play. Um, I'll just um, notes. Um, yes, yeah, so the first game uh, we ended up on the south cap and played a tight defensive base while they um, did a strong attack. Um, after a tense game, we managed to whittle them down for the loss of three of our tanks. Um, uh, so we managed to sort of get them. We, we played really defensive around their barriers and managed to take them all out and we lost three of our tanks so we got a win then. Second round we played um, the same tanks, we had four, uh, sorry, two M2s, a T18 and two T46s. Um, but on the second game we swapped out one of the T46s for a T57. We came onto the opposite cap and uh, moved into a forward defence. We had two tanks go to the hill. Uh, regrettably these two tanks were overwhelmed in short order by they had four M2s which sort of swamped them and um, uh, from there it was just a battle of attrition and we lost uh, we only managed to take out two of their numbers so the score was one all by that time in the last round we, um, we we tried to not dwell on the previous loss and we came up with a new plan of a forward defence uh, as we'd gone to the opposite spawn again uh, we improvised this plan like during the setup. Uh, our team was unchanged. Our T57 stayed at base while the T18 was in an overwatch position facing the hill and the other three tanks pushed onto the hill. Uh, the enemy team stayed with their four M2s and, they, um, and the T57 and they uh, pushed the hill and thankfully with some well-timed arty from our part we managed to get the upper hand early. After a brief firefight we had combined to take out three of their M2s for no losses and we'd secured the hill. Instead of just rushing straight over in the in a mad rush, we decided to have, have a little through. pause and work out what we should do next. And then what we ended up deciding to do was send two of the tanks around onto the island and attack through that way, while the other two went over the hill towards the known enemy position. While the island forces distracted that guy, we were able to then uh, race up beside him and take him out very quickly from the hill position. Uh, that then revealed their arty, arty position, which we again took out in a similar manner. Um, we did lose one tank in, the, in that engagement, but it was worth it tactically to get the win. Um, and yeah, we were very impressed with our team, how, how well they played. And I've got to say, it's a very adrenaline pumping environment playing in tournaments, which is fairly new to me and some of the other guys too. Sounds like it was a good time. Now, we had Disincarnate acting as our strategist and our secondary recorder, but uh, you want to tell them what happened to you, Disincarnate? <laughs> yeah, about hour before the match I got up went over my computer turned it on and well it surged blew my memory and hard drive so I did about the fastest uh, reinstallation of the hardware and operating system and got on about an hour late but, uh, luck luckily I was able to go over the other cat quite extensively it was what we wanted to do and uh, he he took the reins and led an excellent game. Oh, thanks. <laughs> well, all that matters is we had a good time. And there we go, I got killed. Um, did you have anything to add, Kurgan, that you recall? I did better than I thought I would. 
Hey. Oh, and another thing, Kerrigan had the MVP probably that game. Oh, that's right. I remember hearing about that. What happened? You got uh, several kills or one-shotted several tanks? I one-shotted two tanks, the same tank. Nice. In the first game and the third game. And I had five total kills of the three matches. User disconnected from your channel. Nothing wrong with that. Well, as this game's going to wind to a close here, because it looks like our guys who are capping are getting swarmed now. I just want to say uh, thanks to two guys, or four guys, for coming in and helping interview and brief me up on the match that happened. As, like I said, I wasn't able to record, and our secondary recorder, his computer, died off. Hopefully I'll be able to incorporate some of figure. your... Yeah, I know. Hopefully I'll be able to incorporate some of your footage from the second game that we played that I was also involved in, so I do have footage from that. Um, I'll end up putting that at the end of this portion, so it all goes chronologically and makes sense. But uh, overall, we did fairly well. We did better than our first tournament. And uh, we got to go up against the winners of the last tournament in the, the next round that we play. So it was not easy. And it certainly was uh, one of the greater matches I've ever been in. But thank you guys. I'm going to throw it over to that segment of the video. And I'll leave it off there. So now I'm joined by uh, Disincarnate, my team strategist, and also from the other clan that we played, Hooter Chaser from AOD Team uh, Five Finger Death Punch. Great band, by the way. And uh, I just want to say, of course, congratulations, kind of spoiling it here before the game even gets started, that uh, you guys took it from us. It was a very tough-fought game. We thought we had some pretty sound strategies, but going up against AOD certainly has a very strong intimidation factor. So... We did what we Inquisition. could, but it I would have to agree with your statement on the forums that it was a very difficult match and very uh, intense. So, what was your guys' general strategy? What did you guys come up with? Is everyone in position? Well, a lot of times we play conservative and That's see what the other team's going to do. Yeah, uh, once we saw you weren't doing a suicide rush across the field, we decided yeah, to go with a delayed rush yeah, along back. the water um, and then see where you were going. Hopefully, maybe catch you, you know, off guard, and maybe you're going up the hill. Uh, and our strategy was to get to the buildings and possibly light some of you up uh, for Arby. Gotcha. Yes, because I was sitting there on the building, as probably going to be uh, demonstrated in this video okay. at about this time, spotting down the road, anticipating that because we figured no one was going to come up the uh, hill at all. It would take way too long as everyone else could just bum rush right through the center and uh, take the cap behind someone. So I spotted you guys, and then you guys just lit me up right off the bat. I didn't even have time to retreat. But yeah, we saw you guys coming across, and uh, it looked as though almost you timed it exactly to have your locust come over across the hill while the rest of your main force came through the river road. Yeah, so it was a coordinated attack. Gotcha. So you guys were initially uh, planning to do a defense, you said, and then you just decided to go ahead and uh, come out with an assault, or... Was that always a plan, was to wait, see if you get the initial rush, and then attack? No, we uh, start out with defense, and if there's not a strong push, then we turn over to offense, uh, and we just do a delayed rush. Gotcha. That's basically how we set our strat up, too. Um, yes, our initial idea was, uh, talking with Disincarnate, we planned for the first match, of course, was to sit there and defend and either draw it out or make you guys come to us and thus giving us the advantage of seeing you first. Is that something that you always find yourselves having to worry about, is that you're going to get spotted first and have to take a one-tank loss in order to get up into the free of things? Uh, sometimes, um, but like I said... You know, there was the possibility that That's you might think we're coming around the swamp. Um, there were several different defense strategies that we thought you might be doing. Uh, we knew if you were doing the defense strategy that we were doing, that we were going to take some hits. And, you know, very attentively, uh, you know, I took plenty of hits. I think I ended up at the building with like 9 HP. Uh, some of our other guys took some hits. So, you know, we were kind of expecting that um, to be one of your strategies. Yeah, that was just a uh, generic defense plan that we came up with. It was funny because we actually had to uh, teach that strategy to one of our players within five minutes before the game started. Twice, actually, the round before and the one that we played you guys in. Because uh, we had several people who were signed up who had computer issues or couldn't make it or whatnot else. So Disincarnate, 
No, How is it having to teach everyone oh. the strategy within five minutes? Yeah, I mean, he literally... We were going into the match with four people. We had like a minute left on the countdown. And he comes on and we grab him as quick as we could. And literally telling him where to go as the match is starting, you know, counting down from the 30 seconds. Yeah, they're focusing. And uh, we had created a, a new strat earlier that morning, too. So we had to show him that one as well. Damn. And we were sweating just from that. Yeah, we couldn't even uh, effectively show him the placement locations because we obviously didn't have time to show him. So we had to just specifically tell him this bush here, that bush there. So with that said, I must say your artillery specialist was dead on every single time. Is that one of his uh, preferred classes, or is that you just throw random people in random things? Oh no, he's he's very good at artillery. We have. Two people on the team that are just exceptional with artillery, and that's why he was put in that vehicle. Yeah, I, I was amazed at how accurate he was. One more hit. He was top notch, no okay. doubt. It got really close there at the end when uh, it was the two tanks against each other, the artillery piece and the M2, but he luckily was able to track the M2 and thus preventing the M2 from closing in and hitting him and taking him out. So, what went into uh, AOD's choice of tanks for that match? I saw you guys were running pretty much all premium tanks. So what made you guys go with those? Did you do any play testing, or was it all just kind of, these are what we have and we have liked in previous times, or what? Uh, it came from experiencing hub matches. Uh, obviously some of those tier three tanks often get put in tier four and five matches. Uh, we did analysis of both hull and turret armors, uh, DPS, the difference between uh, yeah, AP rounds, heat rounds, gold ah, rounds. Uh, we basically yeah, picked the tanks that we thought like, would do best in it, not it, only one-on-one -on -one situations, but on concentrated fire situations. The same went with artillery. We went through the three different options and picked the T-57 as the artillery of choice. Yeah, I think that was a favorite amongst everyone else as well, at least from... Uh, our perspective. It seemed like M2s were also a very popular yeah, one with the, I think it was a 75 millimeter howitzer on it. Now, did you guys, uh, what was the general consensus for your tanks? Were you all running every single type of round, or did you guys focus primarily on the uh, gold round? Gold round. So we do carry some HE uh, if somebody's low on HP in order to uh, finish someone off. Yeah, to get an so did you end up uh, having everyone buy 100% crew for each tank and then leveling them up any for like repair and camo or anything? Or did you guys just transfer people from other tanks down into it? Some of us, like myself, had played some of those tanks uh, enough that we had decent crews. Others transferred crews. I don't think anybody on our team uh, bought 100% crew. I know for, I dropped down my uh, T20 crew into my M2, as they all had repair and camo and everything else, almost 100%. Give me a slight edge over the standard person who just buy uh, at 75. So, what did you guys end up having as a consensus for all your different uh, modules? It varied uh, basically in personal preference. Uh, one of the consistent ones was meant optics, a spot where available spot liner. Um, very few of us in that match you just came on that. Uh, we were definitely thinking that most people were going to be using HE, so we oh, had boy, most of our guys with small liners. Otherwise, yeah, ventilation, like you were saying, and optics. So let's go ahead and talk about the second match then, when it really came down to the line. What did you guys, uh, coming into that second game, what did you think after squeaking out that first one just barely with your artillery guy hanging in there till the last minute? Well, we thought we'd play a little bit more aggressive. Again, it was a delayed uh, rush, not just straight from yep. the start. Yep. Um, we thought we're up one. Uh, even if we would lose this one, it'd be a tie. Mainly we were you know, going straight over, search out where you were at. We anticipated that you'd probably be doing a, a hard defense on that round. Yeah, we were uh, definitely that second round since we had lost. We thought we would try to... A different strat because we would thought you would expect you what, what we had already done and we tried shot. to come up with something yeah, shot, yeah. that yeah, hit, hopefully yeah, you yeah, hadn't seen all the, all before yeah what did you think when you came all the way into the base and then realized yeah, just we were nowhere in sight until your uh, scouts popped around from the rear like 
Hey, look. There's a bunch of guys hiding in the woods and behind buildings. Was that something you've ever seen before or had expected, or is that something that caught you guys a little off guard? I personally have not seen that before. We've had similar things in clan wars. Uh, when we hit the front ditch there, that's when it starts scratching head. It's like, um, well, did they rush along the higher end of the swamp, or are they sitting back in the trees and in the cabin there near the cap? And, you know, that was something that we thought was less probable. And, of course, when our scout came down and, uh, and found that you were where we thought you were least likely to be. But yeah, we really didn't have another strat to go into the third round if we would have pulled that one. Yeah, we would have had to come up with something on the fly. So how uh, how did you adapt when you found us way back in the back hiding behind those buildings? Did you guys have to do some audibles or call some different things? Or is it kind of just the same as always? You just push and pincer and uh, eventually fold? Well, our first target was already. Um, we told the scout to hunt him down no matter what at least light him up, and once Artie was out of the picture, you know, it was pretty much full out rush, trying to concentrate fire if we could, um, but if we didn't have any unlocking fires, just, you know, try to take out each of the one at a time. I noticed that you actually sent two tanks up around the hill this time. Was there any particular reason you wanted to uh, send an extra guy? No, just uh, in case you had rushed around the hill or in the lower part of the hill to the village. Uh, we didn't want you to send one guy out there on his own. Did you guys have a strategy set for the third round or was it pretty much the uh, same thing had you guys lost? We actually didn't have any particular strat laid out for the third round. We had about three, four different strats we could have used, a mixture of offensive, defensive, depending on the flow of the battle. But if it came down to a third round, we would have had to pick one uh, in that three-minute span. So what you said you didn't notice that the clock was taken down and had literally one second left before the game was about to expire. Were any of you guys freaking out or... Uh, doing their best, going all out to get that one last hit, because I noticed a few were bouncing off Disincarnate, and I know all of us on the WWPD side were counting down the clock and telling him to run and hide, and <laughs> it was getting a little hectic, and we were like, oh my god, he almost has it! So what were you guys doing on your end? Were you also freaking out a bit, or was it uh, kind of calm, collected, just another day at the office? I don't know, it was quite intense and loud on our vent, and I think I bounced three shells off the front of him, and you know, I was yelling, you know, doesn't matter if you hit me, just kill him. Yeah, and I was just trying to use the, the dead yeah, artillery as cover. And it was able to provide me a little more time, but that was probably one of the closest fights, the way it ended, that I've ever been in. I was even try, trying to ram you. <laughs> you know, the <laughs> I know. Someone would have yeah, you were at the end, you, we were nose to nose, <laughs> and you were hitting me. I must say... It almost timed out, and it was, whew. if it went into a third round, we probably would have had to pull another defensive thing. I mean, as I said before, yeah, really I think that, I think we didn't have much of a offensive strategy in mind. And Well, we did. We had a, a river road movement planned, but I think it would be too risky for us as we had standard tanks. And the M2, while it has great armor... I was noticing I was getting penetrated by almost every shot. Obviously, you guys were using gold rounds, and I was anticipating more HE. So I think if it did go into a third round, it yeah, would have been hairy. I don't think we would have been up on you guys. And, and we were expecting, for your players, to be more skilled than ours. So we were relying much more on tactics. Well, on the skill level subject, I would commend you guys, especially first round, using cover to the vein aid. When I was, you know, down to, I think, 9 HP. You guys exploited that uh, weakness there and finished oh, myself and the tank behind me off. And same with the second round, uh, the use of cover, uh, you guys just didn't sit out in the open uh, making easy targets. So then what would you uh, say to the general population of World of Tanks, giving them just some advice from one of the top teams in all of World of Tanks? What advice could you instill into the new players and those who are looking to get into clan wars or tournaments and want to give them some advice to help them move along or to do better? What would you say to them? Uh, a couple suggestions would be watching YouTube videos, learn from people not only how to operate individually, but as a team. 
Sure. Find yourself a yep, good clan uh, to get into to learn some training. You don't have big no, tanks. No. You know, find yourself a smaller clan that works on strategies, uh, learns how to, again, operate individually and as a team. Uh, basically, to win in World Tanks, it's not a, anything about individual skill levels. It's all about Teamwork. Yeah, that is something I've commented on in several videos. It's not about how you can go out and be a hero and get two or three kills. It's about how you can support your entire team and help everyone whittle down the main targets first and keep moving on from there. Well, in closing, I don't want to keep you guys too long. I want to definitely express great gratitude to uh, General... General Direction. General Direction, I'm sorry, thank you. He is the community manager who organized the IGN tournament and several others, and he did such a great job of not only moderating, but getting everything together, communicating when there were problems. He really went above and beyond, and it was almost a full-time job for him, I'm sure. So I certainly want to thank him and everything that he did to get this organized. Do you guys, uh, start with you, Hooter Chaser, do you have anything that you wish to add in closing thoughts? Just like you said, I think General Direction uh, was the MVP of the tournament, uh, because without his hard work and fixing the problems, I think the tournament would have turned out way different. And I must again commend the sportsmanship that we found in this tournament this time. That was great. As a spoiler alert for anyone who uh, hasn't been following the tournament, our team AOD that did beat us ended up losing the next round to a, uh, a clan that I'm not familiar with. Do you just want to talk really briefly on how that went or the other clan if you guys know anything about them? Uh, the team's name is Starry Knight. They're members of Hardware RUS. They basically threw us way off balance with the tanks they brought. One of those tanks that we kind of overlooked, and uh, definite proof that you don't have to have premium tanks to win matches. I know the finals are going to go on fairly soon, so if anyone wants to find out, it's on the World of Tanks website. You can check and see who ends up winning. But uh, I want to thank you, Hooter Chaser, for taking oh, time out. And you, awesome. of course, Disincarnate, for taking time out. No and, uh, problem. Right, thanks, guys. Having this interview with me. I really wish AOD the best of luck. All right, thank you for having me over. Well, that about wraps it up. I want to thank you all for tuning into uh, this Let's Play of World of Tanks, the IGN Tournament Edition. I will again pop back on for other episodes as normal shortly thereafter. Probably, you know, try and get them back to about two a week. So thanks once again. Rating and subscriptions uh, greatly appreciated. I want to thank you all and have a good one.